All right, hey guys, welcome in. Today we are doing fantastic a picture of Frederick Douglass today. We are going step by step by Bisa Butler, Butler, inspired by her woven tapestry of fabric that she creates her works with. It's a really cool artist that I just found out and about. I was able to do some research myself on and find out some new things, not only on her, but on uh, Frederick Douglass and his accomplishments as well as we go throughout this. We'll start this off similar to as we have done some of my other pictures and portraits, probably about the size of my fist um, for his head on here, and then his shoulders and stuff will go kind of down towards the bottom of the paper. So so as I get started, before I get started, I should say to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to get all my free fun videos coming out every single week. Click button and the bell. So okay, let's get started on here. I'm going to start with kind of that U shape for his kind of jawline. He's a pretty distinct jawline as well. So I'm going to kind of start out lightly here. Just don't want to get too dark just in case I make a mistake. So I'm going to go down and then up. As I get a little more confident, I can go a little bit darker. Okay, and then that will go up and over a little bit. This side will tuck in a little bit for his hair, which of course is one of his trademark features. This picture is a little bit different than most Frederick Douglass pictures that I've seen. I'll talk about th that as uh, throughout this piece. And this is also why Bisa Butler herself picked this picture when it comes to a, almost like a curve or a point and then jets over here. I'm gonna set up the proportions a little bit by adding a neck on this side and then down here. And then just lightly knowing that his shirt and jackets and he's got lots of layers on also will go over to the side. Okay, that's looking nice, like a really good start as I often say to my kids. Um, I'm gonna start doing that hair now, uh, right about in the middle of the face. Right with kind of that shape just kind of mapping out where it's gonna go kind of on one side and then stop. And then on the other side, kind of keeps that almost similar shape, but then scoops down a little bit lower on this side and then goes up here. For that line, uh, I, I've done this trick before where I hold my pencil a little bit further back and then so I don't have much control and then kind of do a wiggly wavy line up there and same thing over here, doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of still staying, it helps that I did that uh, original line and then I can just kind of go over on that same one. And now I'm gonna add his part as kind of that side of the head or forehead went up. This one will go over and this one as well going over on there. There we go, that looks nice now. Okay, now I'm gonna do his face. So I set, kinda of wanna set up my proportions. Some people do like a plus sign in the middle so they kinda of know where the eyes, nose, and mouth will set up. Circle part of the eye first. As I get on here, nice good sized circle that I can color in except for a little bit of white I can leave. and then a line on the top of that and on the bottom. Okay, making sure those eyes go to a point. Side stretches out a little bit longer than the bottom. Lining up the nose is usually about right in the middle or right on the, on the inside of the eye to kind of line it up. I do kind of a parentheses on one side and then on the other and then I do kind of a curvy line on the top which kind of goes up into the eye kind of socket and then my little bumps under for the nostrils. Um, this one kind of has a little bit more of that middle kind of shading part so I'll add that. A little bit distinct in that middle part as it kind of curves around gives it some shape. And I'll do that lightly as you start learning and developing your skills on making each feature look a little bit more realistic. Um, usually about a finger or like a pinky's width under here. For the mouth will be that M shape, the dot on each side. I always do that dot just because it lines up usually with the center of the eye. And then it's kind of got that M shape, like a really stretched out M. Looks nice. And then a scoop for that bottom, goes a little bit flat, and then goes right back up to there. Again, just like the eye goes to a point on the edges. 
been nice. Obviously, the more details, the more things that you add to it, the more layers that you go over and over. Add shading uh, will help that eventually. And add a little bit of an eyebrow. It's kind of a, like he's almost squinting. He's got such a very distinct gaze and look that it, it, it almost gives him like a power state of strength and I'm sure some of that gaze in him. So I'm trying to kind of get almost an angle of here where his eyebrow starts out a little bit thicker, but then almost has a little bit of an aggressive kind of arch on here as it goes more towards that middle. Same thing over here, it gets a little bit crowded in here, gets a little thicker and then stretches out on this side, almost to the edge. Okay, and then my line in the middle of my mouth, doesn't have to be perfectly straight, can kind of go up and down. This will kind of curve down. Looking nice, he has a very, like a distinct chin that kind of comes down and a little bit more straight on the edges over here to give him a little bit of shape to his face. Usually that comes in a little bit also. Okay, uh, he's got a little bit of a goatee that kind of bumps down here, kind of adds to some of that texture with his little beard. And that kind of transitions right into his shirt. And he's got a bunch of different layers and drapery. And that's really where you get some of that textile feel from this. Um, it's important to understand that there, there's multiple reasons uh, that Bisa Butler chose this, this specific piece. He's a little bit more dressed up. He's a little bit more fancy. Um, and he has this very like eloquent style to him. And it's a younger picture of him. There's a lot of pictures that um, when she was looking for inspiration from this came across this picture and a lot of the pictures that we've all seen like of Frederick Douglass are kind of of the old he's got the old white afro um, it looks like he's really seen a lot of stuff in his life which is very very, very true um, his life you know from the early 1800s um, all the way till almost the 19th century um, just the ups and downs that he went through and the progress that he was able to make somebody that came from a situation like him throughout slavery um, going from being a slave to having those trials and tribulations and pressure put on you and your family and your basic civilization and people and then getting out of that and escaping that and trying to go into to another now. world and fight for yourself still in in a total different atmosphere of being just respected as a person and a thinker and that's definitely what he was his writing and words really were inspirational and I think what led to a lot of the civil rights uh, movement in the 19th century, still problems that we deal with as a society 200 years later. This is an important piece and just the way Bisa Butler um, took that and represented that in a different way. I thought this was a painting originally looking at it, um, but then realizing that it's a woven like tape tapestry of all different fabrics and layers to it. I'm going to be doing this um, with oil pastel markers and crayons and trying to get a lot of that texture feel on here by just a picture. So that's some of the background and history. Um, he's got a couple different layers on here. It kind of scoops down and then kind of bumps up. And then it goes back over here. And then there's another layer of the hat that kind of goes almost like a bow tie. Kind of do a triangle or kind of an arch over here that kind of comes in the middle and then comes out again, back over here. And then that kind of V, that strong V that would come down on this side. One more layer will kind of jet out and then come back, jet out and come back. Same thing on the other side. And then his last layer kind of curves over still has like a really eloquent kind of style on the side. So give it a little stylized feature on that side. And then his last kind of little shoulder that goes out to the outsides and have some of that thickness that kind of each layer will have like another layer of up to the top. I think that's an important characteristic. To have an ad for him is looking really good now. Now this is just a start. So I'm going to outline this in Sharpie. Let's go through that real quick. Okay, nice. I like how this is looking now. It's the fun time where you get to color and kind of do whatever you want to fill in the background. I got a little bit of fabric on here that I'm going to try to very colorfully make some magic happen. Like... Right, ready, bam! 
Damn, there. Or I should say, there he is. Frederick Douglass, inspired mainly by Bisa Butler, the fantastic, amazing uh, fabric artist, um, textile weaver and seamstress, of course, that we learned about today. But it turned out awesome. Used oil pastels, a little crayon in the background. Um, just had a fun time doing this. I always like learning uh, about new artists and new people, and this is definitely one of those cases. So hopefully you had fun as I did. As always, I am Mr. Shooty. This is Mr. Shooty's art channel. We'll talk to you guys later.